All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, using ValueLine's digital platform and investor tools, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily find worthwhile investment candidates. Going further, I'm going to recommend one stock to buy right now. After the presentation, as mentioned, we have a lot of time for questions and answers. To start, for those joining us for the first time, I want to provide a brief overview of who we are at ValueLine. We are a New York headquartered corporation that has been providing investment research for more than 85 years. Our flagship product is the ValueLine Investment Survey. This service is a unique source of financial information and is designed to help investors make informed investment decisions that fit their individual goals and levels of risk. The product includes data, information, and analysis on more than 1,700 equities that trade on the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and Toronto Exchange. It also includes economic commentary, easy-to-follow model portfolios, stock screens, industry-based analysis, and much more. This service, which is published weekly, is created by ValueLine's research department, which is comprised of more than 70 analysts, economists, data experts, and quantitative specialists. Our research is completely unbiased and independent. Unlike many Wall Street brokerage firms, ValueLine has no investment banking business with any company, including the 1,700 that are included in this service. ValueLine does not execute trades for its subscribers and therefore has no vested interest in whether our subscribers buy, sell, or hold a specific equity. What's more, our staff of professional securities analysts are not permitted to own shares of any company that they cover. As part of the formal presentation, I thought it worthwhile to include an overview of the economic situation, as well as the ValueLine Research Department's view of the stock market. Obviously, this could help us get an idea of which stocks to target. The following content was prepared by Harvey Katz, ValueLine's chief economist. The headlines tell only part of the employment story. To wit, the economy lost 33,000 jobs last month, the first monthly decline in seven years. On the face of it, that would pretend an ill wind blowing in for investors. Yet nearly a ripple was felt on Wall Street, in large part, we sense, because the deadly hurricanes, which wreaked havoc on parts of the nation late last summer, knocked down the jobs total without eroding economic fundamentals. There should be a quick recovery once the dust settles. Our optimism reflects surveys showing strong gains in manufacturing and non-manufacturing in September, along with reports detailing surprising strength in auto sales. Add in recent improvement in our trade balance on rising exports, and we should see job growth quicken later this year. In fact, after the expected brief hiccup, the business expansion should go on its merry way. Armed with resilience on the consumer and industrial fronts, and with hurricane-related re rebuilding efforts expected to begin as early as this quarter, GDP growth, which may have slowed to 2% to 2.5% in the third quarter, could approach 3% late this year and in 2018. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve is unlikely to be deterred. With September's employment decline probably an outlier, and with wage growth picking up, our sense is that the Fed will keep to its carefully scripted monetary tightening schedule. That may put an interest rate hike in play later this year. Earnings reporting season is underway, and it is likely to be business as usual, with a modest increase in third quarter corporate profits still the expected outcome. As always, there is less predictability elsewhere. Vexing questions linger globally, with uncertainty regarding nuclear ambitions in North Korea and Iran still on the front burner. Then there is a domestic political situation where an ambitious tax reform effort is on the agenda, with the outcome very much in doubt. Through it all, Stock market records continue to be set, with pessimism a scarce commodity. In conclusion, given the soundness of the investment backdrop, the case for stocks remains st fairly strong. However, as things rarely work out according to design, some caution is still advisable. Now for the core presentation. As you can see, I am currently at our homepage, www.valueline.com. On this page, you can access, free of charge, daily market commentaries, as well as general interest articles that are written by our analysts. Examples of such content are analysis of economic releases and quarterly earnings supplementary reports on the 30 components of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You can also see here on the right 
These are updates that we put out over the past couple of days on stocks that we cover, um, IBM being the, uh, the big news in the market today. I'm now going to sign in with my username and password. After entering my credentials, I'm taken to the welcome screen. From here, I can quickly get uh, sorry, to many important parts of the website. I can head to our investor tools, as well as the homepage for our stock selection services. That said, for this presentation, I want to start at the dashboard, which is the main landing page for subscribers. As Harvey Catch mentioned in the market commentary, given the soundness of the investment backdrop, the case for stocks remains fairly strong. However, as things rarely work out according to design, some caution is still advisable. I personally believe this is a logical view, especially in this market. Thus, the one stock to buy right now should have some more room to run, but also hold some defensive characteristics. Let's now take a look at how the 1,700 stocks in the Value Line Investment Survey are being valued at this time. To do this, the weekly summary, summary and index is a good place to start. As you can see in the box on the left in the middle of the page, the median stock in our universe is trading at 20 times our 12-month share earnings estimate to March 2018. This is a good time to mention the Value Line's estimates are created completely in-house by our research team. Our PE calculation is also different than many other research houses. More specifically, we use a combination of reported figures and estimates for our PE ratios, which we think is, a be is better than using a trailing figure or just estimates. The PE of 20 on a historic basis is high, but is consistent with levels reached during other multi-year bull markets. For perspective, let's consider just how far we have come. The S&P 500 index is now valued at around 2560. Five years ago today, it was around 1430. That is a gain of almost 80%. We think that there are still plenty of worthwhile investment candidates, but at these levels, there are surely a great number of overvalued stocks, so it is vital that we separate the good from the bad. For our search, I am going to include price to earnings as one of my criteria. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's now go to the screener and find some candidates. This important investment tool can be accessed via the Find Ideas tab at the top of our website. Subscribers have access to more than a dozen preset screens, as well as 50 fields. I should also note that the screener possesses more than 200 fields in total, but those are only available with a higher level subscription. I am now going to run a screen. Since we discussed it earlier, and it is important, let's start with price to earnings. Simply click, out the, click on the field and we'll fill out the criteria. This can be done in a couple of ways. I can use the sliding bar to set my range, or I can just type the values in the to and from boxes. As mentioned, the median is 20, so I'm going to focus on stocks that are currently trading below that level. So I'm going to type 20 into the to box. I also want to remove stocks that are trading at very low multiples which often implies that something besides earnings is impacting the stock. This can be a legal matter, recent management turmoil, or signify an industry that is currently out of favor. Thus, I'm going to set the low bound to five. <coughs> this will also remove unprofitable companies. Now, I want to include a field that will focus on stocks that are expected to perform well over the near term. Valueline's timeless ranks are perfect for this. For those that don't know, Valueline has been ranking stocks for timeless since the 1960s, and it measures the probable relative stock price performance over the next six to 12 months. The ranks are sorted on an easy to understand scale of one to five, with rank one or two stocks expected to outperform the market. <coughs> so let's focus on ones and twos. Excuse me. Sorry, everybody. The timeless rank covers the short term, so let's add a field for the longer term. 
The Dialines Research Department creates three to five year projections for company financials, including revenues, earnings, book value, dividends, etc. These projections provide a long term view in regard to where we think a company is headed. <coughs> for this exercise, I'm going to focus on projected earnings per share growth. And I'm going to set my lower bound to 10% which is a healthy rate. Okay, down to 50 stocks. Uh, we're making some progress. Let's now add some defensive properties. There are numerous risk and volatility measures, with beta probably being the most popular. However, I'm going to utilize value line safety ranks. <coughs> the safety rank measures the total risk of a stock and is also arranged on a one to five scale with one being the most stable. I want to highlight the fact that stocks ranked favorably for safety have, in the past, held up far better than the broader market during corrections and downturns. For this, let's focus on stocks that are risk profiles that are better than average. So I click on the field and we'll select one and two. <coughs> and there we go, five candidates. According to our criteria, these are good stocks for an equity portfolio that wants to continue riding out the bull market, but is also aware of the risks. Before I move on, please note that users can save screens and revisit them later by utilizing the button at the top. If you're like me, you tend to watch a batch of stocks for a few days or weeks before seriously consider taking a position. ValueLine's watch list tool makes this easy. I can access the watch list from the menu above or from browse research which I'm going to do now. To save time, I've already created the watch list for these stocks, but the process is quick and easy. Of these stocks, I am recommending a closer look at FedEx, ticker FDX. Let's see why. Clicking on the company name will take us to the Equities Digital Report where the data, information, and analysis is arranged in more than 15 modules or boxes. These modules can be moved around, resized, and hidden so you can create your own customized stock report. For instance, let's say I'm most interested in the analyst commentary. I can quickly, I can simply quickly and drag, sorry, I can simply click and drag that box to the top. Once I alter the presentation to my liking, I can save the changes from the sliding horizontal action bar. The next time I come to this stock report, it will look the way I set it up. Let's first get some quick information about FedEx's operations. So I'm going to scroll down to the business blurb module. As you can see, the Tennessee headquartered corporation provides package delivery services through its air and ground transportation network. It operates in more than 220 countries, and insiders own 8.5% of the common stock. Let's now take a look at FedEx's recent price action. From the valuation module, I can quickly pull up a stock chart. The yellow line is the equity's performance. As you can see, it has done well of late. In fact, the stock price has advanced about 20% so far this calendar year. I'm now going to take a look at the analyst commentary to get some information in regard to what is going on at FedEx. Editorial analyst Kevin Downing mentioned the following in his most recent full report. FedEx closed out its fiscal year in good form. Domestic express package revenue rose 7% year over year in the May quarter, owing entirely to price increases as volume was flat. This progress was partially offset by network expansion costs. Revenue from the ground decision rose 9%, on a 3% rise in average daily volume and a 6% increase in yield per package. International package revenue was up 80 as last year's TNT acquisition drove volume growth. The average yield was flat, excluding fuel and currency translation. Finally, the freight segment saw its top line advance 6%. Shipments were flat, so price increase drove much of that gain. Earnings per share of $4.25% grew 29%, 
owing to pricing, greater volume, and the inclusion of TNT. Two, 37 cents of that tally came from new foreign currency tax regulations and updated accounting methods for share-based compensation. I now want to show you the classic PDF report, which is included with a digital subscription, and provide some analysis on why we think FedEx will continue to perform well and the stock will trade for between $275 and $335 during the 2020-2022 timeframe. Accessing the PDF can be completed via the tab in the gray bar. Going back to Kevin's commentary, the company continues to pump cash back into its business. Capital expenditure was a record $5.1 billion in fiscal 2017, and that number is expected to rise to $5.9 billion this year. Most of that will go towards fleet modernization and facilities slash sorting equipment to support volume growth at FedEx ground. As you can see in the statistical array, ValueLine is projecting healthy top and bottom line gains over the next several years. As mentioned, the stock has done well of late, but we think it has plenty of room left to run. Going further, we think that FedEx would make a fine addition to most equity portfolios. It stands out for the short and long term and is quite safe. All told, in our opinion, it is one stock to buy right now. Another useful tool that is available to ValueLine subscribers is the Alerts Hub which can also be accessed via Find Ideas. Users can set up notifications and receive an email or text message when a notable event occurs for a specific stock. You can set up alerts for a variety of events, including when the price of a stock moves considerably, when there is a trading volume spike, or when value line changes the rank of a particular stock. In total, more than 15 alert functions are present. Let's quickly set up an alert for FedEx. For instance, after, partic after participating in this webinar, you were interested in the stock. However, perhaps you want to follow it for a little while and want more information before establishing a position. You can set up an alert and get notified when ValueLine puts out a new report on this issue. I will take you through this easy process now. I hope you found the method for finding a stock to buy right now interesting, informative, and efficient. I do also want to point out, however, that ValueLine offers a variety of model portfolios that can help you alleviate the work of finding worthwhile investment candidates altogether. Part of the ValueLine Investment Survey is the weekly selection and opinion newsletter. Along with economic and stock market commentary and data are four model portfolios. You can access the selection and opinion from the quick links at the dashboard. Of the four model portfolios, each one has a different investment strategy, is actively managed, updated each week, and always contains 20 stocks. The portfolios are overseen by senior research analysts. Portfolio one is best suited for aggressive investors and focuses on stocks that are expected to outperform the broader market over the year ahead. Portfolio two should be of interest to more conservative investors and focuses on dividend paying stocks that also offer worthwhile appreciation potential. Portfolio 3 chooses equities with long-term price growth potential and, of course, is best suited for patient investors. Portfolio 4 is filled with stocks that possess above-average dividend yields and is for investors seeking current income. We have a great number of subscribers that follow these portfolios. For those interested in possibly adapting, adopting one of these strategies, here are a few helpful details. New positions always amount to 5% of the market value of the respective portfolio at the time of the trade. Any dividends received are simply taken as cash. They are not reinvested. Lastly, the portfolios are not rebalanced. All told, the model portfolios represent some of the Value Line Research Department's best investing ideas, and we recommend that you read the analyst-created content and look over the, the portfolios for possible additions to your holdings. Subscribers looking for a total investing solution are also encouraged to check out our premium monthly selection services, Value Line Select, Dividend Income and Growth, special situations, and select ETFs. If this is something that sounds up your alley, 
Call 1-800-VALUE-LINE for a free sample report. This marks the end of the formal presentation, and I will now tackle your questions. All right, so give me a sec. Okay, uh, first questions. Uh, you cover 1,700 stocks. How is that determined? Um, it's a good question. I get it a lot. Um, I personally select the stocks that are added to the survey. Um, due to acquisition, delistments, bankruptcies, we're obviously always losing stocks. Um, an example, the other day, uh, you know, we launched coverage of Dow DuPont, but obviously we lost one of those stocks to acquisition. Um, so we're always adding one to two uh, new ones a week. Um, just to give you an idea, this week um, we launched coverage of three stocks, um, MGP Ingredients, um, and um, I'm blanking on the other two, uh, USANA Healthcare. They, um, they make uh, nutritional products um, and an education stock. Um, so we're always adding, and I pick them. Um, it's a pretty simple um, process. I look for stocks that trade heavily, that trade on you know, domestic exchanges. Um, I look at market cap, float, sales, obviously how the stock is doing. Um, the, the, the trick is just to find the stocks that are going to be of the greatest interest to our subscribers. Um, we also take requests. Um, so if that's something that uh, we don't cover a stock that you're interested in, you can send us an email. Um, I can't make any promises, but it will get the stock on my radar. Uh, we have a couple questions about will this webinar be, uh, be archived and recorded? Uh, yes. Um, within the next 24 to 48 hours, we will post this webinar on our YouTube channel. And uh, it can also be accessed from our homepage. All right. Okay, uh, do you have uh, buy, target, and stop out prices? Um, yes, uh, several of our products, uh, we just, for instance, mentioned the model portfolios. We um, provide detailed sell notifications in the weekly write-ups uh, since the portfolios always have 20 stocks. Um, you know, there's always a, a, a corresponding purchase. Um, a lot of people use our time on this ranking system for that. Um, they'll buy... You know, ones and twos, for instance, like we did uh, in the screen, and when a, the stock they own goes to five, for instance, they'll sell it. Um, also, in those premium newsletters I mentioned, uh, select, dividend income and growth, et cetera, um, when we recommend a sale in one of those portfolios, uh, users receive an email or a phone message alerting them of the sale. Um, it's a question about uh, print delivery. Um, all right, so um, as a digital subscriber, those users do have access to our reports early. They get them Monday morning, or earlier than print, I should say. And print customers can expect to get them by the end of the week. Um, another question, uh, do you ever use forward PEs? Um, we do look at, at forward PEs um, on our reports. As I mentioned, we show the current PE, we show a trailing, and we show a median, which is a 10-year average. Um, we also estimate what we think a stock's PE will be three to five years out. Um, actually, I think I still have the PDF open. Yeah, as you can see, three to five years out, we think that FedEx will trade at 17 times earning, for instance. Um, all right, question, uh, how often do you change stocks in the portfolios? Um, I'm assuming that's going to be the four model portfolios. Uh, turnover is, uh, varies from portfolio to portfolio. Um, portfolio one, since it aggressively pursues near-term gains, there's a, a fair amount of turnover. Um, I would say the last time we looked at this, it's about 100% turnover every six months. While portfolios two, three, and four, um, are far smaller uh, when it comes to turnover, maybe 75% uh, a year. Um, next question, are you planning to add more BRIC and EU companies? Um, yeah, there's actually a, a few on my radar. Um, it's just sometimes a little challenging to get um, historical pricing or historical financials, and there are some countries, I hate to say this, that it's hard to trust their financials, so we are very cautious. Um, although that's not typically a problem, uh, 
for the EU and, and several other areas. Um, let me see what other questions we got. I know, sorry, uh, I'm trying to do this rapid fire. I know everybody has uh, has things to do. Uh, for technical indicators, um, our analysts do look at moving averages and candlesticks. And uh, although we are more of a, a fundamental base shop, we do look at, at technicals. Um, using value line, is there a way for me to follow small cap safe stocks? Uh, yeah, I mean, we um, you could run a screen similar to what we did. You could start with, with small cap stocks. Um, we define small cap as having a market cap under $1 billion. Um, and then you could put in our safety ranks, beta, price stability, earnings predictability, any safety measure to give you a list. Um, also, we have a small and mid-cap survey, which covers 1,800 stocks. And there is a model portfolio for small cap stocks that focuses on dividends. So those are going to be a lot of conservative, relatively safe plays. Uh, for a couple people chiming in late, the one stock to buy right now was FedEx. Um, okay, a lot of questions. Um, another one, um, oh, will Valueline follow Baker Hughes, a GE company? Uh, yes, uh, we're actually putting together the initial report on that stock. Uh, for those of you who don't know, General Electric bought an oil field services company, Baker Hughes and then spun it off with its existing oil field uh, and energy assets. Um, our report will be dated November 3rd, just so you know. Um, trying to think if I see any others. Um, here's a question, can you introduce a digital report for the S&P 500 index? Um, we do put out some um, index and sector information. A lot of this is provided uh, as kind of special features in the selection and opinion. Um, but covering the S&P 500 like it's a stock, um, we, don't, we, we don't really report on indexes in that way. Um, um, oh, last question, and this is a, a good way to finish. Uh, does Zylon offer free trials? Um, yes, from our website, um, on the homepage, uh, is a link for trials, um, or you could call 1-800-VALUE-LINE. Uh, one question, uh, another one, sorry, late, uh, late arrival. Um, you have a lot of different subscriptions. How do you know which one, uh, uh is to subscribe or, or which one I guess is best for you? Um, obviously it's going to depend on, uh, what kind of stocks you're looking for or what particular security you're looking for. We have products on convertibles, mutual funds, ETFs, um, options. Um, I would look at our site, um, call for a trial, fill out a free trial for a product, um, or call 100 value line and talk to one of our sales associates. And with some basic information, they should be able to point you in the right direction. Um, all right. Uh, that seems to be all, all, all of the questions. Uh, thank you so much for attending. Uh, like I said, this will be uh, posted on our uh, site and YouTube within the next 48 hours. So if you want to review it, thank you very much. Have a great day.